After the tragic loss of your friends at sea, how far are you willing to go to learn the truth of their faith? And will you remain sane throughout the ordeal? There is the question of Thalassa, Edge of the Abyss, which was released on August 1st, 2024. The game is developed by Sarepta Studio, who are the creators of my child, Liebensporen. And I will tell you, when I started playing this game, I was quite unsure about it. The first moments of gameplay were a very mixed bag, marked with stuttering, visual glitches and performance issues, but also showing some good voice acting, pleasant art style and great character animations. Thankfully, it turned out that the prologue is the game's weakest point. As soon as I got into the meat of the game, I was hooked and ended up finishing it in two play sessions. The entire experience took me just over seven hours, and it did not feel too short, neither did the game outstay its welcome. Lengthwise, the story it told was perfect, and I was very content with my $20 spent on the game, as I feel I got my money's worth. Now in Thalassa, you play Cam, a deep sea diver. After a tragic accident, you were grounded and put on leave while the ship went on to continue the mission, trying to fulfill the goal of bringing up an old sunken wreck somewhere deep out at sea. But something went wrong. The Thalassa, which is the name of the ship you were working on, well, it sinks. The crew was lost and you are left with nothing but questions of what happened to your friends. And so we get into the main part of the game. Cam, with the help of Bailey, who was on leave with you, returned to the wreck of the Thalassa. As a deep sea diver, you dive down to find out what truly happened on the ship's last journey. You find the ship sitting on the edge of the abyss, man's the name of the game, and from there, the gameplay is focused on exploration and mild puzzle solving. As you go through the ship, you gather up clues by finding photos, documents, items and audio recordings, which lets you piece together the story. Both of the accident, which led to your time off, and the events leading to the Thalassa sinking. There is a special mystery solving menu where you put in your discovery so Cam can figure out what happened. The game even shows you how some of the events probably unfolded. Here is very handy when a mystery is actually solvable, the specific mystery is gonna glow yellow or golden, allowing you to see what you can solve right now and what you require more clues for. And as you solve the mysteries, you can find new items around the ship, which Either you simply could not interact with before, or they have magically appeared. I genuinely am not sure. But it does mean you will be doing quite a bit of backtracking. Now when you first enter the ship, you have limited access to areas. But as you explore, you start opening up different pathways and shortcuts, making the travel across the ship much easier, though not fast. You see, the game is set in 1905 or 1906 at the latest. So you were wearing one of those old-timey diving suits with a big round helmet, meaning Cam moves rather slowly, which is fitting for the underwater theme. And while this generally did not bother me, there were times when the backtracking got a bit frustrating. Though not as frustrating as the painfully slow animations of picking up and examining items. Cam does things slowly, very slowly, and while it feels kind of realistic, it is also frustrating at times when I want to progress with my investigation and Cam is really slowing me down. But for me the mystery was enough to keep me going even if Cam was moving slower than I preferred. Now you do have a map of the ship during your exploration, which is very good as the ship is quite big. And in the map, you also have color-coded rooms to tell you if something is still there to be found. Which is good, because finding things can be quite tricky. Now you're wearing that old diving suit, so the range of head movement up and down is limited at best. And you can only interact with things from certain positions. 
though I spent a surprising amount of time re-walking through rooms in the hope of finding whatever tiny interaction point I had managed to miss. But the mystery kept me engaged till the end, so I was willing to put up with the frustration so I could find out what really happened. And my determination and patience were rewarded with the answers I was looking for. Now the environment and sound of Thalassia are deeply immersive. Their cohesive art style makes the game feel safe, almost familiar, and yet unspeakably sad. As I wandered around, finding my way into the bedrooms of people of the ship, or found little hints of precious moments between two now lost people. There is a heavy thunking sound from Cam's boots as he walks through the ship, mixed with a pleasant music that put me surprisingly at ease. After all, this isn't a horror game. Even if the setting might sound like it, you actually won't be finding any dead bodies, gore or jump scares in the game. In fact, I think I only got startled once during my entire playthrough. The main focus is the story and the people within it. The crew of the Thalassia is a group of various nationalities and personalities, and each is very well written and voice acted. The writers managed to make them feel like real people who are each dealing with their own issues. And if you keep exploring and solving the mysteries surrounding the individuals, you learn about their smaller stories and events that happen during this final journey. It is bittersweet seeing a teenager maturing, love blossoming, friendship being founded, or a person spiraling into a deep depression, knowing their fate before even stepping on board the sunken vessel. You are, after all, exploring the final days of people who are already dead. But that made it even more important to make these characters feel alive, and I feel the developers managed to do that. And while there were definitely some performance issues, I encountered much fewer after I entered the underwater section. Though now in an environment that is constantly swaying about, I knew motion sickness might become an issue in this game. And I'm glad to report it both has a FOE slider and the ability to hide your diving helmet. Adjusting both really helped me minimize the motion sickness, though it did not quite go away as much as I would have personally liked. But I believe the developer did their very best to make sure everyone would feel comfortable playing the game. And I could easily forget about my minor discomfort as I got myself lost in the story. This is a game I might play again in a few years after I've sufficiently forgotten the story, but overall it does not offer much replay value. But still, I believe the price is fair for what the game delivered. So, if you enjoy narrative games focused on exploration and mild puzzle solving, Thalassa, Edge of the Abyss, might just be the game for you. But that is just my opinion. What do you think? Is the Lhasa something you are interested in playing? Or have you already played it? And then what are your thoughts on it? Let's talk about it down in the comments, of course keeping the spoilers to a minimum for those who have yet to play the game. And while you're down there, make sure to do the good YouTube stuff. Like the video and if you haven't already, subscribe for more gaming reviews and probably some let's plays and other content as well. But in the end, all I want to say is that for a horva, Oh, the Indus Landak.